In this video, I'm gonna show you a tool that is going to make installing cabinet hardware extremely efficient. Welcome back everybody, Jason with Bents Woodworking. If you're following me on Instagram, then you know that recently I've been working on redoing all of the kitchen cabinet doors and drawer fronts in my own kitchen. And a lot of you probably don't know that one of the least favorite tasks for me is installing cabinet hardware. So when True Position Tools, who is the sponsor of today's video, reached out to me and asked if I would be interested in using their cabinet hardware installation jig, I was all about it. And that is exactly what I'm gonna show you guys in this video. I will give an overview on the capabilities of the jig itself. I will show you a demonstration on a couple of mock doors that I have here. No, I did not build these doors for this video. I actually made a mistake on a client build, built the wrong size doors, didn't realize it until after I painted them, and then went to go install them. Luckily, I kept them. Once I get done with all of that, I'm actually gonna take this and use it on these doors in my own kitchen, just to show you how quick you can do an entire kitchen using this jig. This is the True Position Tools TP1935. This is actually the full kit. However, we will primarily be focusing on the TP1934. So I'll start by opening up the box and show you what it comes in. And just to start off, so it does come in this nice hard plastic case. Uh, and when you open it up, this is what it will look like on the inside. So it essentially comes with two things. So the first thing is you have this drill bit, which comes with an adjustable stop collar. And then it also comes with the jig itself, which we'll get into exactly what this jig does and what each one of these pieces are here in the video. This is a jig that is designed to give you the ability to make repeatable holes when installing cabinet hardware such as this. The big benefit to this is you now have one jig that does any drawer pull that you want up to, in this case, 12 inches wide. When I refer to 12 inches wide, I'm referring to the distance between the two posts. With that being said, this being the 1934 model, this will handle what the majority of people would be doing. If you find yourself in the need of making holes longer than 12 inches apart, that is where the TP1935 set comes in, and that has some increased capability. So because you have the ability to easily adjust this from say, I'm going from a four inch to a six inch, or maybe a four inch to a 10 inch, all I have to do is make the adjustments which I'll walk you through on this device and that alleviates the need to make multiple different size jigs for different size drawer pulls or door pulls. This can be used in two separate ways, either horizontally, let's say for instance this was a drawer front, or it can be used vertically, for instance if I wanted to add a cabinet pull to the side of the door. Let's talk about some of the features of the piece itself. So this is going to be essentially your stop block. On here, you have a little cutout mark on the front, and you also have that cutout mark on the back, and that is used as a centering mark. That mark is perfectly in line with the center of that hole. On the jig itself, it actually has laser engraved measurements, and the great thing about this is it is both imperial and metric. And that applies to both the horizontal portion and vertical portion or vice versa, depending on how you're using it. It comes with these two adjustable pieces, which are just tightened down with a set screw. You can slide them back and forth to get your measurements. For instance, let's say I was doing a six inch drawer pull. I would set this to three. I would set this to three. I could then ensure that it's correct by holding my handle up to it, testing it out for anything six inches or less. You don't even necessarily need that second one. You can actually set this to six inches, lock it down, and you can use the center hole that you see here. So a couple different options. Now to ensure that you're on the correct measurements, these actually have laser cutouts as well that you just line up to whatever the measurement is. This one here does not have that. However, you use the bottom of this plate and you align it on whatever measurement you want. So for example, if I wanted two inches, I would slide this down. And now the distance from my stop to the center of this hole, and obviously that translates to these holes as well, is exactly two inches. The last piece that this comes with is this end stop. And the end stop does exactly what you would expect it to do. You can set this to your desired measurement, 
and then you can use this as your reference on every single piece. And so that way you can go from piece to piece and butt this up against it. And it's gonna put these holes exactly where you want it every time. I wanna point out that everything on this is reversible. This overhangs on this side, it overhangs on this side. You have the cutouts for your center mark. The holes themselves can be drilled from either side and the stop itself protrudes both directions. And you're gonna see why that's really handy here in just a moment. What I wanna go ahead and do now is actually set this up to show you guys a demonstration of it being used. First thing I'm gonna do is determine the width of my style. And the width of my style is two and a half inches. Now, I want my handle to be centered on that style. So obviously I need to be at half of two and a half. So I'm gonna set this to an inch and a quarter. Again, making sure that the bottom of my plate is on the line for inch and a quarter. Once it is, I'm gonna go ahead and lock that down. And then as you guys can see here, now my holes are right in the middle of this style. As I said, there's two different ways that you can utilize this jig. The way that I will be demonstrating on the two doors inside of the shop is by using each one of these adjustable slides independently. Then when I do the install of all my kitchen cabinet doors in my own house, I will be utilizing it the way that True Position recommends, and that is by using the center hole and one adjustable hole. There are a couple reasons why this is beneficial. The first reason is, is that now I have a true reading on my stop, meaning if I want my handle two inches from the bottom, I can simply place this here to two inches, and I know that my bottom hole for my pull will be two inches from the bottom of the door, and then I would set this spacing whatever the width of the handle itself was. The second benefit is that it eliminates any confusion by having three holes present which will eliminate the possibility of drilling the wrong holes. Should you choose to use it in this configuration, I would highly recommend that you put a piece of blue painter's tape over the center hole just to ensure that you don't accidentally drill that hole. Now I'm gonna go ahead and set this up for my pole. I already know my pole is 96 millimeters from the center of the hole here to the center of the hole here. And that's roughly equivalent to three and 25, 30 seconds, but uh, I'm a big fan of metric myself, and since this has both imperial and metric, I'm going to go ahead and set the scale on the metric just because it's going to be a little bit easier in this scenario. And there's two ways that you can do that, as I discussed earlier. I can utilize this as my bottom hole. This is my top hole. And if I do that, I'm just going to go to 96. But if I didn't want to use this and I wanted to use each one of these, then I would set this to 48. and I would set this to 48. Now, something you can do just to make sure that these line up for your very first one is you can look through these holes, and in this case, they are dead on. So the way that you get your measurements on this end stop here is the back side of this end stop lines up with whatever the measurement is. In this case, I want the center of my pull to be at five inches. Go ahead and tighten this down at five inches, slide this forward, and now this right here, the center of my pull in this case, because remember, I just set this up to where these are gonna be the two holes that I drill, is now five inches from the bottom, and that'll give me my handle, it'll be roughly about right here, and it'll look kinda of just like that, and that's really exactly where I would want it. And so now let me show you a quick demonstration. I'm gonna do two doors, I'm gonna install the two handles and show you another cool feature about this that I talked about earlier. Okay, so I brought you in for a different angle. So let's pretend for a second that these right here are my doors and they're gonna open like this, right? So clearly my hinges are gonna be on the outer edges and this right here is where I'm gonna want my pulls. So now I can go ahead and take my jig I'm gonna place this against the door. I'm gonna slide this up. It's now in place. I'm gonna take my drill. Drill my holes. And then this is one of the features I wanted to talk about earlier. I mentioned that this is dual-sided. So I can take it from one cabinet face, 
flip it like this, and it is now centered on the other door. So I pull this back, drill my holes. And just like that, I've got my holes drilled for these two. And then I can go every single door repetitively after that. I'm not gonna tighten these down all the way. I just wanna get them threaded in there a little bit just to show that they lined up exactly the way I needed them to. And now I've got my door handle installed. All I would do now is tighten these back ones down. But again, this is just to demonstrate how they lined up exactly the way I wanted the very first time. What I have here is just a scrap piece of three quarter inch MDF because I want to show you what you would be doing if it was a simulated drawer front, right? And so this is a 15 and a half inch wide board. So I know I need to find my center point. My center point in this case is going to be seven and three quarter. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that center line. I'm just going to go ahead and use this real quick to transfer my line. Now you might be asking, uh, you're not going to mark up uh, your paint job. Well, for me personally, I'm always going to drill out all of my stuff before I paint anything. And that's why for me, it doesn't really matter too much marking it up. And so now I need to go ahead and find my center point. And so I can use this zero inch and zero millimeter to line it up. You could use this hash mark up here. You can look through the hole right there and make sure that it's lined up. Now let's say we want our uh, pole to actually be centered on the drawer. Well, the same thing applies. If I know the width of the door is seven inches, well then I know that I can just adjust this here to three and a half inches and now I can go through every single one of my drawer fronts and drill every single hole. And if it's a wider pole, I adjust it. If it's the same pole, I keep it where it is. It's as quick as me just adjusting this one thing, getting it lined up on center. It's good to go. I can go to every single drawer front and I can use it just like this. So I apologize for the lighting. I brought you in my home to share with you uh, the demonstration that I'm actually gonna use this jig on the project that you can see in the background I've got all of my doors hung prior to them being painted. And so I'm gonna go ahead and use this jig right now on all of my doors in preparation for paint. I've got my jig all set up and I'm using it the way that I mentioned earlier that True Position uh, recommends for this application. And that is with the center hole and the one adjustable hole. It's currently set at 76 millimeters wide because those are the handles that I am using. And then I've got my stop set at 1.25 inches because the majority of the styles in my kitchen are two and a half inches. As I mentioned before, it comes in two different packages that you can buy. The TP1934 and the TP1935 actually comes with this and these additional pieces. And real quickly, I just want to kind of explain how you expand your capabilities uh, with the 1935. The first thing it comes with is an extension right here, and it comes with this mounting bracket. What this is designed for is if I had a drawer that was much, much wider and I needed to use this to find center every time. This gives you the ability to now extend this and then you would be able to clip this on the far side of the drawer and this now being the center. 
And this is completely adjustable as well because all it is to adjust it is set screws and you can adjust this as you see fit based on the width of the door. And the other two pieces that come with it are actually long extensions because before you can do up to 12 inches with the TP34, which is good for most applications. But if you start getting into the really, really long pulls, that's what these come into play. They also have an additional purpose as well, but I'll talk about that here in just a second. Slide that on, set the set screw, slide this one on, I set this set screw, and now I have all of these holes to use in order to maybe install a very, very long or very wide pull for say a very wide drawer front. The other really cool feature about having these extensions here is that each one of these holes is evenly spaced apart. So let's say that you needed to add shelf pin holes. Well, that's what you can use this for as well. Now, when you purchase this jig, it does come with an extremely helpful guide that actually shows every single thing you can do and very much more in detail with pictures and instructions. It'll give you a lot more information on what you can do with the TP1935 as opposed to just getting the 1934. So now the question that everybody always wants to know and what does this stuff cost? So the TP1934, which is just the simple cabinet hardware jig, which I demonstrated through the entire video, comes in around $189. The TP35 set, which comes with the additional attachments that I briefly talked about in this video, comes in at $299. My opinion on the quality of this product is it is fantastic. I have no doubt in my mind that it will be around in my shop a very long time, if not forever. Which one would I recommend and to who would I recommend them to? Me personally, I think the 1934 is more than enough for me. I do a fairly good amount of cabinet work and one of my least favorite things in the world to do is installing cabinet hardware. If you're somebody that is building cabinets as your job and installing cabinets on a routine basis and will probably come into a million more scenarios than I ever would in my shop or the projects that I build, a 1935 would be a fantastic investment. And lastly, if you're somebody that just really doesn't ever do a lot of cabinet stuff or might build a door here and there or a drawer here and there, and you very rarely ever install cabinet hardware, then the device itself is probably not worth it for you. However, me personally, I know I would much rather have it. It just saves time, time is money, and overall, I can't say enough good things about the product. As always, everybody, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch the video, and if you're not following me on Instagram, go check me out there, at Ben's Woodworking, and follow along on a day-to-day -day basis on what I'm doing in the shop. So until the next video, get in the shop and try something new, I'll see you in the next video.